Welcome to this tutorial on going live for fitness professionals using Zoom. My name is Tyler Valencia and I'm the president of Kips and Kettlebell Concepts. At the time of this recording, there's a lot of fitness professionals using services such as Zoom and hopefully this helps with one or more questions you might have. Right now, I'm standing in my home garage and later on we'll come back and test some of the audio and video settings to hopefully make your stream that much better. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe and like button and throw any questions you might have in the comment section. Let's get to the breakdown. This video is going to be broken up into three sections, equipment, zoom settings, and business aspects. If you are looking for a specific item, feel free to check the description for timestamp major points in the video. In general, Zoom is a great tool for meetings, gatherings, and streaming a workout, which is what many fitness professionals are using it for. The added bonus is that it can get the job done for free. There are more tools that can be unlocked with a purchased account with Zoom, but for this tutorial, we'll be using the free account. Let's start with our first section, equipment. The computer being used for this breakdown and demonstration is a Mac, but the same settings and tools can be utilized with a Windows-based computer. One of the more underutilized and quick fix items you can do is lighting. The cameras on the computer aren't always the best, but utilizing natural light, studio light, or a home light stand can make a difference. If you can consider opening a window or if streaming in the garage, consider opening the garage door. With these small adjustments, make sure you check how it affects the lighting with the camera on the computer. By that I mean don't just put the lights on or open the door without checking the outcome prior to streaming the workout with your clients or class participants. Studio lights on Amazon can be a nice investment too if you're looking to add online training to your services in the future. These kits start around $40 and can go higher than $200 and are typically a pay for what you get item. That means a $40 kit can work but don't expect it to be the best on the market. Next, microphones. This is another pay for what you get item and I will highlight two lavalier options that are highly recommended and can be used for future tutorials if you are building a library of videos or planning on streaming more. From all the research we performed, the consensus seemed to be that the RodeGo microphone is the top lavalier microphone. As a side note, this microphone was used at certain parts of this video and will be used later in the Zoom demonstration. This microphone typically costs anywhere between $195 to $199, which includes a transmitter and receiver. The negative of this microphone though is that if you want a smaller lavalier to clip near your neckline, those can cost you an additional $15 to $80. This microphone can connect with an iPhone or tablet, but you need a specific connector for the phone or tablet that you have. The next microphone that might interest you is the Ceremonic Blink 500. One of the cool features of this lavalier microphone is that they make a receiver that can connect directly to an Android phone or iPhone. From all the research we perform, this microphone is very close in utility rating to the Rode Go that was previously mentioned and is slightly cheaper at $179 for the setup that connects with a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera. If these microphones are out of your price range or you found a different option, please feel free to go that route. Improving your audio is one of the low hanging fruit items that can often be improved with finding a headphone and microphone laying around the house. At the same time, keep in mind that if you're shopping around on Amazon, that microphones are especially a pay for what you get tool. There are several in the $100 range that might sound appealing to your budget, but in the long run, the two mentioned above are the ones that are going to give you the quality and longevity that you want. Now, Zoom settings. In this section, we're gonna focus on video and audio settings that will hopefully give you a better product for your participants or clients. Let's start with video. There's only one quick video adjustment that we would recommend, which is switching the enable HD feature under the video option. This cleans up the video quality a little and hopefully looks better on the client's end. These types of small adjustments might sound minor to some, but these little tweaks add up to an overall better service in a competitive market. Using Zoom does have the ability to use a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera, but this is an advanced feature that requires purchasing a capture card, which might range in price from 180 to 300 plus. These are primarily used by gamers, so if you have a loved one that has one already, you may be able to share or get extra use out of it in the future. Again, 
This is an advanced feature that requires an additional hardware, but the output will make the video that much better if you're looking to put out high quality service. Here's probably the area that is most asked about and probably takes a little practice to master, audio. One of the major issues that instructors who use music will face is playing music while instructing. Ideally, the music plays through the participant's computer instead of through the host computer to the microphone and then the participants. With the latter, there is typically a little lag and the quality is much lower. To get the recommended option, first select screen share and click the advanced tab. From there, click computer sound only. Right then, a pop-up might come up that says install Zoom audio device, which is okay to click and let install. A negative that we experience while trying to find all the right settings is the host will not be able to hear the participants while in the screen share mode, but they will be hearing the computer audio. This might be due to the lavalier microphone we were using and with other options that have a headset, you might experience something else. If you're teaching a class, then you probably don't want to hear the participants audio, but at the beginning and end, you could always end share screen and connect with your participants. Through trial and error, the music volume around 40 to 50% allows enough sound on the participant's end of the music and instructor. Another suggestion we heard from asking around, but did not test ourselves, was the use of Bluetooth devices. This is a suggestion from what we heard. These were not the most reliable. Take that as word and feel free to test it on your own. Let's check out a couple examples with these settings and what it sounds like without a microphone, lighting, and proper settings. This is a sample recording with no outside light, no music, and no microphone. This is a sample recording with the Rode microphone, no outside lights, and no music. This is a sample video with no music, no microphone, and additional light source. This is a sample video with no music, no microphone, and just the additional light source, the outside. This is a sample recording with no microphone, royalty free music, outside lighting, and also garage light. This is a sample recording with a Rode microphone, outside lighting, garage lights, and royalty free music. Before we wrap this breakdown, there's a couple helpful items to remember if you're a fitness professional teaching online. First, liability forms. Many who teach or train individuals inside a gym are typically covered by the liability form of the gym that you work for and what the individual signed when they joined. How you collect these and create one are things to think about. If you've never created one, quickly doing a search in Google will provide an example and something that you can modify. Next is your liability insurance. Again, if you've been working inside a gym, then you are most likely covered by the liability insurance of the gym. If not, there are many options online that can be purchased on a month to month basis or even yearly for around $115. Make sure you check the features of the coverage, but to keep in mind that once paid for, you're set. A professional tip is to practice streaming. It's already been mentioned that this is something that can be a potential service that you offer year round, but making sure it's professional is important. If you've been having trouble with the audio settings, call a friend, have them listen in, watch, see what you can alter with the settings and adjust with the music loudness. Ask them if they can see you clearly from the spot you'll be doing your teaching and if any alterations make it better. Lastly, ask for feedback from your participants and follow up with them. Just like with in-person training, improving your service will only make it that much better. These items will also make your participants feel like they're part of the foundation of your streaming workouts. Still, offer things like referral friend promotions, discounts, free trials, and any promotions to help get spots filled. Keep in mind that streaming a workout is a global option. You are no longer working within your local market and you can make this as big as you want. Invite friends and family and see if they have friends who would be interested. That's it for our breakdown on streaming workouts with Zoom. If you found this video useful, please let us know how you'll be using Zoom with your fitness business. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for future videos for fitness professionals.